Hi, it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another exciting Maya Q&A. This week, I'm actually going to be answering a question that I had when I was trying to polish the animation I had of a character swinging a sword. And I was trying to find a way of actually polishing the arcs easily. This is a technique that I learned from an animator called Richard Lico, and he's an animator over at Polyarch Studios and a game developer as well. Now, I'm going to leave a link to his Vimeo page down below because Richard has a load of talks about his animation process and he's really open with the techniques that he uses. So, big kudos to him for sharing all his knowledge with all of us. Now, the tutorial that we're going to do today, Richard took about 20 seconds to actually do it, so I'm going to go at a slower pace and we're going to go step by step with all the things that you need to set up in order to make the constraints work. Now, this will be part of a class that I'll be releasing next week on Skillshare, and I'm going to be teaching people how to animate weight. But let's dive straight into the tutorial, and I'll show you guys what you need to do in order to polish your arcs in a really cool way. So I've created a very small, simple animation, which I'm going to play through, and you're going to see that the path of the sword isn't really polished up that much. What I'm going to do is select Create, and I'm going to look for a locator, and I'm just going to scale that up so it's nice, big, and visible. I'm going to be making several of these and placing them throughout my scene. So what I'm going to do is press Ctrl D to duplicate the locator twice, and I will rename them all. The first one to Sword Tip, the second one to Position Lock, and the third one to Orientation Lock. Each one will control a different constraint and a different part of the rig. So I'll select first the sword tip and press V on my keyboard along with the move tool and I'm going to move the first locator to the tip of the sword and it should constrain to the vertices. You can also use the buttons at the top to achieve the same effect. Then I'll make sure I have the sword tip selected and I am going to bring up the rig and I'm going to look for the wrist controller and I'm going to shift click from the wrist controller onto the locator I just created and create a parent constraint. Make sure Maintain Offset is still turned on, and now we should see that the tip locator will actually move along with the tip of the sword, like that. I'm now going to save the data from the locator as world space data by going into Edit, Key, and choosing Bake Simulation. It will add a keyframe on every section of the locator, and then I can select the parent constraint and delete it by pressing Backspace on my keyboard. I'll then select the Orient Locator and middle mouse button drag it onto the Position Locator to parent it. Then in the Viewport I will select the Wrist Controller and Shift Select in the Outliner the Position Locator. Go into Constraint, Point Constraint and make sure that Maintain Offset is turned off. And then we'll do the same with an Orient Constraint, again making sure that the Maintain Offset is turned off. This is like doing a parent constraint. So now, with these two, I can look at the wrist and I'll see that the position locator is moving along with the wrist controller from the rig. What I'm going to do next is go up into the channel box of the position locator and select the Translate X, Y, and Z controls, right click and choose Lock Selected. I'm then going to do another bake by going into Edit Keys Bake Simulation. And because I had locked the channels, if I open up my graph editor, you'll see that there is no position data in the Translate X, Y, or Z. There's only rotation data, which is exactly what I want. Now I can delete the orient constraint because I still have orientation keyframes, and that's the reason why I did point an orient constraint instead of just a parent constraint. Now I want my orientation constraint to control the wrist, so the first thing I'm going to do is select the sword and then shift select the orient look and go into constraint aim constraint and we're going to choose the world up to be a specific object by choosing object up and we're going to be using the position underscore lock as our up vector. I'll press add over here and if this is working I can select the tip locator move it around and we should see the orient locator move along. Apologies because the background's green so you're not going to see it very clearly in the video unless you're watching it in HD but everything seems to be working so I'm going to select the orient locator and then zoom in to shift select the wrist control over here and once it's selected I am going to go and make an orient constraint this time making sure that maintain offset is turned on and I will add it there. Now the thing that always catches me out at this point is that I need to select the wrist controller and make sure that I add a keyframe by right clicking on the blend orient option which is inside the timeline. So I can now zoom out, select the tip locator and as I move it around you'll see that the wrist actually rotates to any position that I select. 
going into the animation toolset, I can choose Visualize, Editable Motion Trail, and I can see that the arc of the tip of the sword is really, really, really messy. I will select some keyframes on the timeline and delete them all the way down to make that curve much simpler. And then I can go through the timeline and actually start moving the sword tip into the places in space to make a nice smooth arc. And I can do most of this work visually inside of the viewport. And I can think about lead and follow and other things. And the great thing about this method is that I don't have to counter animate anything. And I can create a nice smooth arc all around the character and then if I delete the editable motion trail I can then press play and see that now the arc of the sword tip along with the wrist is nice and smooth. This is a great technique for polishing your arcs and it saves you a lot of time when having to finish off your animation. Thanks for watching. If you found the tutorial useful, remember to like and subscribe, and you can press the bell button to receive the notifications of when I'm releasing my latest videos. I'll be posting an announcement in the community page this week with some extra goodies for you guys, so look out for that. And I'll be back next week with a question from the community. And if you want to ask a question about Maya, then just send me a question down in the comment section below. But until next week, keep learning, stay strong, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.